All right, guys, so we are going to make a really simple um, one, two, three, four ingredient um, steamed salmon that I'm gonna prepare in my hotel kitchen, but you can easily make this on the plane. Um, and I'm gonna show you how with these really great, they're both oven and microwave safe steam bags. And what's really awesome is they have a whole directory of cooking times on the back, depending on what you are cooking, which makes it kind of foolproof because then you don't have to really remember it or be looking that up in flight, it makes your life easy. So I'm doing a little prep work right now before we put everything on our salmon. Um, I have a king salmon filet here that I have asked the um, fishmonger at Whole Foods to please remove the skin. I could do it myself, but since I'm working in a hotel kitchen, I have this ridiculous serrated chef's knife that I don't even understand why this was ever made. Super difficult. So instead of hackneying my totally beautiful um, king salmon filet, I just asked him to remove the skin. So that's why mine does not have any skin. Um, and it's about eight ounces. That's norm. That's like a very, actually that might be more than eight ounces. I kind of forget what he ended up telling me it was, but it's still pretty big. Um, I could actually make that two portions on a plane because then it would be really nice petite little portions. Um, and I'll show you that when we go to plate. So our ingredients are scallion, green onion, some Roma tomatoes that we're gonna concasse, and I'm gonna show you how to concasse. I have the water boiling now. A lime's optional. I kind of like that extra acidity, a nice little squeeze of lime. I think it makes it taste super fresh. And ginger. And if you've never learned how to peel ginger before, I'm gonna turn this water down so that we don't get ourselves into a pickle. Um, uh, I like to make my, my life easy when I go to buy ginger. I'm. Ginger is a root, so it, it grows a little bit fungusy. Um, and so I look for the most lateral piece of ginger I can possibly find. And I'm gonna show you how we skin it using a spoon. So you just run the spoon, and because of the concave um, angle of the spoon, it makes it really easy to remove the ginger root skin. And you see, because it's such a nice lateral piece of ginger, it's making my job really easy because I don't have a lot of crevices to get in and around. Um, and you know what the little sides there, I'm just gonna cut off. It smells, ginger is so strong, it's so fragrant, um, but it it's so fresh. It just, it tastes so fresh when used in any, um, in any recipe and you don't need a lot of it when you're using it fresh too. Um, and ground ginger could work too, it just doesn't quite carry the same freshness of flavor. I'm just gonna cut off these little guys here. And again, excuse, I'm, I'm at the residence in, in Weehawken and using their kitchen equipment. So we're making the best of what we can do. Um, I just wanna cut that off, make it a little bit easier on me to get that skin off. I'm gonna cut that part as well. And for a piece that size, you probably only need like half an inch of ginger, not much. I'm gonna continue skinning it. We're gonna concasse the Roma tomatoes next, so stay tuned and I'll take you guys over there. Okay, so for our um, tomato concasse, I chose to use Roma plum tomatoes because I like how firm they are. Essentially what you're doing is extracting kind of the juicy inner bits of the tomato so you just have that really delicious uh, tomato meat that um, is on the outside and you know, I once read that Tom Brady doesn't eat tomatoes because they're an inflammatory fruit. And actually the most, the part of the tomato that is not really digestible is, um, is the tomato skin. And therefore all we're doing here is removing the skin and this is a really easy way to do it. So again, I'm back with my residence in serrated knife here, but I'm just gonna make a surface, um, quick little incision in an X shape on the bottom of the tomato. And I'm not cutting too deep into the flesh. I just want to kind of peel away that skin a bit. And then we drop it into the simmering water and I'm gonna take you there. All right, so we're gonna put our tomatoes into the slow boil. And I have a slotted spoon here ready to get them out when they're um, when the skin starts to peel away. And then I also have a bowl of ice here that will stop the cooking process once 
that skin starts to peel away and I put them in there because I don't want to cook the tomatoes right now. I just want to get rid of their skin. So I will show you what it looks like when they start to um, be ready. And this should only take about 30 to 45 seconds, maybe a minute, and you'll know when that skin starts peeling away, it's time to get them out. All right, so if you see that initial X I had drawn on the bottom has now almost carried its way up the tomato flesh. So that means it is ready to go in its ice bath. It's wrinkling away. This one too, see that, uh, that line there? The skin is starting to peel away from the flesh of the tomato. And that one is done as well. So we're gonna let those cool down a bit in the ice bath to stop cooking. And if you were gonna do this on the plane, just warm your kettle up and put your tomatoes in the Pyrex and do the same thing. It will work the same way and you're still able to remove the tomato skin in the plane galley without a cooktop here. Okay, so our tomatoes have chilled in their ice bath for a while and you can see that initial X, I made a little incision, that skin is just peeling away. I mean, I don't even need a knife at this point. Normally you can use like a little paring knife and um, just skin the tomato down once it starts to peel away, but I don't even need it. Can use my hands just as easy. And do our second one here. And our third. And this is gonna be more than enough. You really probably don't need three tomatoes, but since I'm going through all this work of doing a tomato concasse, I'm gonna make a little tomato bread as well. So, all right. This is gonna get pretty juicy when removing um, the inside of the tomato. So have some paper towels or a kitchen towel nearby to kind of sop up the juices there. So all I'm gonna do is just cut it into quarters. And what I want to do is remove all of this. So I'm just going to take my knife again, my terrible residence in knife, and peel down and remove. And this is the part we're going for right here, this meat part of the tomato. And this is going to be great because tomatoes have a lot of water in them, and therefore you're not going to have a super soggy dish by doing this. You're just getting the flavor of the tomato um, without all of that soggy water that comes with the tomato. So I'm gonna finish this up and then I'm gonna show you how we get our salmon into the microwave. Okay, so we have concassade our tomato. We have cut our green onion. It's kind of a little bright, let's see, there we go. And I have minced the, um, the fresh ginger root as best I could with that silly knife I had. And we have our King Atlantic salmon here. So. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to mix all of these ingredients together, place it on top of the salmon, get our salmon into our steam bag here. Another reason I really like these is because it helps with the smell, the odor of cooking fish. Um, it really helps kind of uh, keep that at bay a bit. So, um, and you could do these one per portion of fish. I probably would do like four max. This also helps keep your food warm. So I'm also going to do some spinach, put some spinach in, um, in one of our other microwave bags as well with maybe a little bit of fresh garlic and our salmon filet is going to sit on top of that, um, that bed of spinach and it's not gonna need a lot of flavor because there's gonna be so much flavor and juice and deliciousness coming from this guy that it's going to flavor our, our salmon already. So. With all our ingredients, we're gonna mix all this up together first. I love green onion, so I'm definitely going a little heavier on the green onion here. But it's such a colorful dish as well, and um, that, that's kind of already great when you have color working in your favor. You have freshness and, um, and that greenery. It's, it's not those brown colors of, of other meats that you get. Um, not saying they're not delicious, but when food like this is already so colorful, it doesn't need a lot of garnish or a lot of decor. 
doesn't need a lot of color, um, pardon me, a lot of garnish or a lot of decor because it's already so beautiful. So we are just gonna place this on top of our salmon filet. Just let that coat it beautifully. And I'm just gonna fill up as much surface area on the top of this salmon as I can because the more surface area you cover with this mixture, the more flavor, the more moisture you're incorporating into it, and the tastier it's going to be. And according to our microwave bag, we are going to cook our salmon for about three and a half minutes, but I'm probably gonna do three minutes. Um, just because I like my salmon a little bit more on the medium rare side. So, see that? And once it's in the bag is when I'm gonna dress it with our soy sauce. We could actually put a little bit on now. Just a slight little drizzle drizzle. And I'll put a little bit more. And you notice too, I didn't salt this fish before I put this on here. Soy sauce is obviously so salty. I don't want it to be too, too, uh, too salty, so. We're, um, we're using the soy sauce as our, as our salt here. I love soy sauce. Any recipe with soy sauce in it, I'm good. And also our lime, we're gonna save that for the end so it's that extra little acidity juice going in. All right, this guy. This is like such a big salmon filet to do with one hand, but we're just gonna slide it in just like so. There we go. And I wanna save all this, get that in there too. Okay, I'm gonna put that in our sink. So on the plane and even in your own home kitchen, home, own home kitchen, work on or really practice mindfulness of working clean, like wiping up your surfe for surface areas as you go, washing your hands as you go, especially when preparing food for other people. Um, it's just really good habits to get into because especially in the galley, things get fast paced and things get out of hand really fast. Um, so if you stay on top of it, you're in better shape. So this oven bag, we just remove the sticky, fold it, it's so sticky, fold it over and seal it. And it's gonna go in the microwave for three minutes. I'm gonna get our spinach ready and we'll do it together. Okay, so here's another really great side dish that we're gonna do with our salmon. Um, it's gonna be the bed in which our salmon rests on is our spinach, wilted spinach. We're gonna cook that in another one of these microwave seal bags. I'm just gonna throw in a little bit of crushed garlic, more as an aromatic than to actually be part of the dish. And spinach already has so much water in it that it really doesn't need a lot of liquid to steam. If anything, once it's done out of the um, steam bag, you're gonna wanna drain it because it's gonna have so much excess liquid from it before and you don't want a pool of spinach moisture on your plate. So have some paper towels ready to go once you cut this open um, to drain your spinach on. So we're going to get our bag open. Also, as you guys, anyone who's ever cooked spinach before know, it cooks down so much. So. Don't be afraid to go a little generous on the portions when you're um, cooking it in the bag because it's gonna cook down and um, you're better to have a little bit more than less when using it. So I'm gonna discard these guys. So again, just taking some crushed garlic. It doesn't even need it, really. Crushed garlic. I'll put a little olive oil in there because why not? Just a little drizzle. Um, and let's also just put a little bit of salt as well. Right now all I have is finishing salt, but if you crush it up in your hands, it gets to be a finer grade that you can use. And I also don't wanna overpower this with salt too because there's soy sauce on my salmon that's gonna be sitting on top of this. So, so that's also going to be, you know, the salty flavor aiding my 
eating my spinach. Oh dear, what did I just do? This is so sticky, I tell you, if you are not on top of it. Perfect. All right, going into the microwave. Okay, our salmon is done. So I'm gonna throw our spinach in now. Oh, it smells so good. And what's great is this bag is also going to keep it hot for now. And we are just going to put this in for, oh, quick time. Like 45 seconds, may even be done in 30. In the meantime, remember that leftover concasse? We have that tomato concasse. We're gonna make a little bit of some tomato bread. We went through all that work to make the concasse. Let's make it go as far as possible. So I have one piece of toast here and I'm just gonna drizzle a little bit of olive oil on there. And then I have some garlic that I'm just gonna rub. I'm not even gonna crush it, I'm just gonna rub it. I kinda just want the essence of it on the toast, on the bread. You could use nicer bread than this, this is just what I have. And then we are going to take that tomato concasse and rub that into our bread. I probably went a little heavy on the concasse here. Probably does not need that much. Maybe that means I just need to make a second bread, second piece of bread. Maybe have two pieces of bread for dinner tonight. Well, that sounds exciting. Okay, so we have that. Here's the killer part. Some flaked sea salt. So fresh, so good. Just brings it all together. Because tomatoes are so watery, they can take a lot of salt. Perfection. And let's make it a little prettier because this is like a normal piece of bread. Let's cut off our edges here. Make it a little square. You can even cut it into little diagonal pieces here too. In fact, let's do that. That looks nice and refined and gourmet, like a little finger sandwich. And voila, a little tomato bread, little European tomato bread. Serving that next to someone's entree, if someone did that for me, serving me on a plane, I'd be so thrilled. Delicious. Okay, so we have our salmon. Oh, you know what? It needs a little bit more time. Let's do one more minute and we'll plate up when it's ready. So we have our spinach draining on some paper towels, getting some of that excess moisture out. And we are going to put that in the middle of our plate now. Kind of smush it down a bit so that salmon has a beautiful place to rest. And one thing is you do have to cut these bags open. I don't have scissors, so I'm gonna use a knife. Okay. And you know, this salmon is so big. It's a really, really big portion. So I think I'm actually going to cut it in half before putting it on the plate. So, sorry, tomato bread, please move on over. All right. Um, on out. Oh, and it already is breaking apart. Oh, it's perfect. It's perfectly cooked at three minutes I put it in there for. All right, so our portion size, let's maybe do, hmm, let's do that big. That looks nice. All right, so here is our salmon. We're gonna put that right in the middle there. And there are some juices in the microwave bag that we are then going to use because that is so good. And it's okay for it to not look um, perfect. You know, this isn't like a, a fine sauce. So we're going to just drizzle that over. Perfect. 
with it and a little squeeze of lime. There, and voila! Easy salmon dish to make on board like you are a true chef in the sky.